My name is Kathy, and I'm a coordinator of the Friday Night Out of the Cold, as Ken has mentioned. And I have to say, I am not an expert on homelessness. Um, for expertise, you need to talk to people like Ken, who is experiencing it, and, and other people on this panel who have experienced it in the past. But I have learned a lot in my 15 years of being part of running an Out of the Cold program. The first thing that I usually mention when I do presentations is there are two ways of looking at homelessness. The first one, in some ways, is maybe a little easier. It's as a big picture. So there's systemic reasons why we have homelessness. Um, the first uh, systemic reason is because of poverty. That is the most pervasive cause of homelessness. It's inextricably linked. Experiencing poverty can mean a person is one illness, one accident, or one paycheck away from living on the streets. People who are not living in poverty can experience every one of the same problems that people who are homeless experience. Mental health issues, addiction issues, um, illness, all of those can be experienced by somebody who's not poor and they can maintain their housing through whatever they're facing. But if you're poor and you face one of those issues, you are much more at risk of becoming homeless. And in Canada, the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. And there seems to be a lot more poor people today than there has been in a long time. One uh, place where I look has said that proportionately, we have more poor people in Canada now than we did during the Great Depression. The second reason for populations becoming homeless is because of the de decreasing number of low-income housing. And this is something Judy mentioned. Um, traditionally, poor people lived in the downtown cores, um, while middle class and wealthy people moved out into the suburbs. But in the last two decades, people have been increasingly deciding to move closer to where they work. They take low-cost properties and um, re we make them into something much nicer for them to live in, um, but it takes away low-income housing. At the same time, older houses are being demolished to make way for high-rise condominiums, and apartment buildings are being converted into condos, leaving a lot fewer rental properties. Rent control is no longer in place, and both the federal government in the 1980s and the province in 1995 withdrew from social housing needing it to the region to provide for everything in the way of low-income housing. And the third reason is something else Trudy mentioned was the deinstitutionalization of the Canadian mental hospitals. Um, they closed the mental institutions because it was supposed to be a more humane way of dealing with people with mental illness. Move them back into the communities where they came from, where they might be more comfortable, and it was supposed to save money. The money saved was supposed to go into community supports. Unfortunately, they moved the people back into the communities, but they didn't move the money with them. And so those community supports did not materialize the way they should have. So now we have mentally ill people living in an environment where they are no longer protected and they're left on their own with no support. We see a lot of those that are home. The more difficult way of looking at homelessness is on an individual basis. And I can say that for every person who is homeless, there is a story. And um, the presentation I was looking at yesterday talked about when something happens to one person, it's a tragedy. When it happens to 100 persons, it is a statistic. And that's a paraphrase of a quote from Stalin, but it really is true. It is very easy for us to gloss over when we talk about the hundreds of people who are homeless or thousands of people who are homeless. But when we talk about individuals and look at the reasons why they're homeless, it's much more um, meaningful to many of us. So some of the reasons that are listed um, on the homeless source for uh, becoming homeless is the decline in public assistance, divorce, domestic violence, drug and alcohol problems, physical illness, job loss, post-traumatic stress disorder, poverty, 
which we talked about, roommates, something we don't always think about, severe depression, and tragedies. There is a very high cost to homelessness, too, that people don't realize. Most people think the only cost for homelessness is the cost of shelters, but that's not true. One of the biggest areas of expense for us as a society is hospitalization and um, health costs. People who are homeless often do not get regular health care, and when they become sick, they become much sicker than the rest of us. Another very significant area of costing is policing and the justice system. And unfortunately, all of those things are handled by different levels of government. So if you look at the overall cost, it's much higher. But on, for, for one level of government, they say, well, we can save money by not putting it here. They don't realize that all of those tax dollars come out of your pocket as a taxpayer. It doesn't matter which level of government is spending it, it's being spent. And if we could spend money better, we could spend less by providing housing. There are five cities across Canada that participated in the At Home project. This was a Housing First model. Um, housing First is based on the belief that housing is a right and not a privilege. And the philosophy proposes that providing housing before any other service will lead to improvements in all the areas needed. And it's proven to be very effective. The savings in hospital stays alone for these five cities for the individuals paid for half a year of housing for those people. And that didn't include all the other costs that we are that they don't list. Stages of homelessness. Most experts say there are three stages of homelessness. <coughs> and um, many people are really surprised to realize that they themselves may have been counted as homeless at one time. The first stage is 70% of the people are homeless. Um, that can happen for many of the reasons that I've already listed, but it includes things like a house fire, a natural disaster, or it could be the end of your schooling or your between jobs. I don't know how many people have gone home to live with mom and dad for a couple of months while they got back on their feet. And, you know, I, I, I have to say, Mike and I, when we were first married, we spent the first four months of our marriage living with relatives. We didn't think of ourselves as homeless. But we really were. The people who are homeless are in stage one are in a heightened, heightened state of crisis, and finding a home is their highest priority. Stage two are when people begin to adapt to living without a home. Now these are people who have lived a little bit longer, and it depends on, on who they are and where they are and how long that is. But they've been unable to find a home, and the resources are running out. So their family and friends have helped them all they can and are saying, you know, we've had enough of you sleeping on our couch. It really is time you find another place. Um, these people are still really highly motivated to find a home, but at this point, they need some help. They can't do it on their own. <coughs> and stage three homeless are what we call chronically homeless. These are people who have been homeless a year or more. Um, they've been homeless long enough to experience what's called social decompensation. So for these people, they've, they've adopted, they've given up on finding a home. Now what they're looking for is, where is my next meal going to be? Where am I going to spend the night tonight? It doesn't mean they don't want to be housed, it just means they've given up home. There are many myths of homelessness, and I know that the, um, the, the quiz that was being handed out covers some of this, these. So, some of them are the, well, I guess you can look at them there, because I don't think I need to go into all of them. You can read them there. Um, in conclusion, in 2011, there were 3,133 people in Waterloo Region who stayed at shelters. In 2012, we know there were even more. We had a 17.5% increase in the people staying at, out of the cold. And the other shelters also had increases, and I don't know what those amounts were. 
So, and that only includes people who access the helps. That doesn't include the people who are sleeping on somebody's couch. That doesn't include the people who have refused help at the shelters and who are sleeping on the streets. So what I would ask people to do is take action. Lobby your politicians to end poverty and provide housing that is affordable. Encourage a living wage. Take into account poverty reduction and housing policies whenever you vote. And please remember the human cost of tax cuts. Every cut in taxes means a cut in program funding. And please, please support housing projects in your neighborhoods. Remember, we all deserve a home. Thank you.